evening everyone. Tonight I want to do a little just switcheroo video for you. I've just been going through some of the fragrances that were in the perfume cabinet in my bedroom and I wanted to switch some of them out because there's just some in here that I'm not wearing. Uh, I apologize the video quality isn't going to be as good as normal just because I am filming with my phone and I'm just trying to find ways to get videos done and out to you guys because I know that at the moment our life is a little bit hectic. Uh, we have family staying with us, we're doing renovations. Um, the weekends I'm spending painting and sanding and trying to get my life in order and stay on top of work. So, you know, I'm sure you all understand everyone goes through phases in life like this. So at the moment, I just don't have a lot of free time to set up a full sit down video with lighting and makeup and, you know, um, a proper camera. Although I could have brought my camera upstairs, but at the moment I just decided to grab my iPhone and get it done. So we're getting it done. So these are the fragrances that I am taking out of my cabinet and they're going to go back downstairs because I'm just not wearing them at the moment. The weather is starting to warm up a little bit. It's the, coming to the end of winter. I'm a little bit over heavy, ambery, super sweet scents. I still enjoy sweet scents, but I'm just not enjoying so much the ambery, heavy fragrances. So. I might just quickly run through them. Um, some fragrances that I already had in here are going to stay and I will cover those off in a different video when I tell you what I'm also bringing upstairs from the downstairs cabinet, but that'll be a different video. All right, so let's get started. So first of all, we have Delina Exclusif. This has done me very well through winter. I have to say I have really enjoyed wearing this to bed in the evening. Uh, rather opulent fragrance to just be wearing to bed. But this actually is not one that I find I want to wear out. It's not, I just feel, I think I feel really self-conscious when I wear this in public, but I actually just really love wearing it for myself. Um, so that has been a lovely fragrance to wear to bed throughout winter, but I'm giving it a rest now. Over here, we have Bewitching Yasmin from Penhaligons. Look, I think I wore this once <laughs> in the whole time it's been in this cabinet. And I think the last time I did a rotation of my fragrances was what, three months ago? At the very beginning of winter, I think. So mm, I'm not sure about this one. I, I, I do like it. Uh, I just wasn't feeling it this year at all and I, I wore it once and I kind of got sick of it throughout the day and wish I had worn something else but it was probably just the day that I wore it. I will give it another chance next winter or another time if I feel like wearing it but yeah it didn't go down so well for me this year. Next up is Ulala La by Theo Cabanel. I was on the fence about taking this one out because I actually think this might work really well in springtime, particularly on the cooler spring evenings. Um, but you know, if I, if I feel like wearing it, I can always go grab it. I did get quite a bit of wear out of it at the beginning of winter. Um, and I've worn it quite a few times actually. I can't remember how many times I counted in my air table, but a few times. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a break because it is quite, a fairly dense fragrance you know there's iris um, and lots of sandalwood in here but it has quite a dense sillage cloud um, it has a bit of weight to it so uh, yeah I think I might just give it a bit of a break I know that at the moment I'm really just not gravitating towards heavy scents so um, I don't want to I just you know I, I just know that it's time to, to give it a bit of a rest Next up is Phil de Joy, uh, or Phil de Joie, I'm not sure how you say it, by Serge Lutens. Again, this is a very, you know, you really have to be in the mood for this one. I think I wore this twice, uh, and that's not too bad, actually. I, I didn't know how often I was going to wear it, because it is a very, it's not an easy fragrance for me to wear, but 
I do enjoy it. I especially enjoy the dry down, but it's a very strong, seductive um, jasmine based scent. But there's a, in the top, it smells a little bit like cherry cough syrup to me. <laughs> um, so it is, it is a hard one to wear, but I do enjoy it when I do. Next up, we have uh, Orchidea Vanille by Van Cleef and Arpels. Surprisingly, I didn't wear this as much as I thought I was going to this year. I have gone crazy over this uh, in previous years. I'm pretty sure last year I wore it a lot more, but that's okay. I obviously just wasn't feeling it as much or other things were calling me more. I uh, still really love it though. It's just, it's very vanilla-y. And even though I've really come around to vanilla and fragrances, and sweeter fragrances, I, I still really have to be in the mood for vanilla or this much vanilla. So it's just gonna have a little rest for a while. Panthea Iris, I already talked about this on the live stream that I did last weekend. I still really love this fragrance. It's just that, again, I'm sort of gravitating towards more fresh, watery, floral type fragrances rather than sort of powdery, heavier fragrances. So. Just giving this one a bit of a break for a while. Stella by Stella McCartney, arguably an odd one to be taking out when I'm in the mood for fresh florals. Um, this is quite cold and sharp for me at the moment. I think I need to wait for the height of summer to pull this one out. So I'm just gonna put it away for a little while, but I expect it will come out again during the warmer months. Samsara EDT, I wore this a ton, <laughs> particularly during the two weeks that I was doing that little challenge. This was one of the bottles that was in that challenge. And yeah, I wore it quite a lot and I love it. In fact, I was still on the fence about putting it away because when I, when I smell it, I think, oh, I really love it so much. But Again, I've worn it quite a few times and I do recall that by the end of that two weeks I remembered thinking to myself I was getting a little bit sick of it because I tended to reach for this one more than any of the others that I had chosen for my little challenge uh, because I felt like this was the most wearable to me at the time and it's probably closest to a fresh floral than any of the other fragrances I had there. So um, yeah, I just remembered thinking that I didn't want to get sick of it so I'm giving it a break. Next up is Chalamet Filtre de Parfum. I really love this one, of course. I think I've said a few times, I think this might even be my favorite Chalamet, but it is still quite dense and we are coming into the warmer months. So I think I might switch to a different Chalamet flanker, perhaps the EDT or maybe Initial or um, Souffle de Oranger. I can't remember how, the, how you say it, but. <laughs> either one of those other ones. Pretty much I think I have a Chalamar for every season. This is Mura de Majestes by Mugler. Uh, I really, really like this fragrance a lot, but it is definitely a cooler weather fragrance. It is quite sweet. It's sweet and ambery. There's a little bit of a smokiness in there, I think. It's been a while since I've worn it. I do remember wearing it a few times at the beginning of winter, and I just really loved it. I, I, and I also think it's a really great work scent, to be honest, but um, it's just a little bit sweet. And again, it's an ambery scent, so I'm just not, not reaching for it at the moment. Sandalwood Temple, <laughs> another one from the little challenge that I had. Still really adore this fragrance. But again, I'm just reaching more for fresh floral type fragrances. So I, I just I may as well put this away for a little bit. Next up is Shergi by Serge Lutans. I did wear this a few times, I think, during winter, uh, particularly when we went out in the evenings, which we did do a couple of times. And yeah, nothing bad to say about it. It is quite heavy. I do tend to only reach for this in the cooler months, and I tend to reach for it when I'm going out on a formal occasion or something. Next up is Tender Romance by Ralph Lauren. Matt loves this one. It's a very sweet, caramelly, ambery, floral fragrance that's probably the only way I can describe it. It's very sweet um, and he really adores it. He also really likes the Delina exclusive on me. This is usually one of my bedtime scents. I never wear it any other time except around the house and in the evenings because I know Matt loves it. So <laughs> I think he loves it more than I do. This one is Tuberose 2 by Histoire de Parfum. I, you, you may recall, I bought this by mistake. <laughs> 
last year I meant to buy tuberose one and I picked up tuberose two by accident um, I oh, I'm not loving it I don't hate it and Matt really likes it and every time I wear it he comments so I kind of only wear it for him but it's not it's not my favorite so I don't know if I'm even going to keep it but I'm not rushing a declutter at this point but yeah I don't know that one might be on the chopping block next up is Rococo by Tion Rintel Natural Parfums I love this fragrance it's a very vintagey smelling tuberose dominant fragrance it's very big it's very opulent it's very majestic but it doesn't smell like other things on the market it does have a very natural perfume vibe to it has a very vintage perfume vibe to it uh, I, I really love this but it is definitely a cooler weather scent for me so although that's not true I probably could wear it in the summer and I may very well give it another wear when the weather warms up a bit but there are a couple of other Tier and Rheintel parfums that I want to bring up and start wearing a bit more so this is having a little break Poison by Dior. I don't think I need to say much more about this. Can't wear it a lot, but I love having it and I do really love the smell, but it's not something that I necessarily reach for regularly. It is, it is kind of a challenging one for me. Solar Blossom by Mizencia. <laughs> I know, I know, I really love this one. I've raved about it heaps. And you would think that given that I'm into florals at the moment, that this might be one that I would be putting into my rotation, but actually I'm really not into orange blossom at the moment. I've kind of gone off it. So I'm just giving it a break, not forcing myself to wear it and I'll bring it out maybe again in a few months, but yeah, sweet orange blossom is just not my vibe at the moment, and that's okay. I still love it though. I know I love it. Next up is Valeur de Roses by La Lausanne. I don't have a lid because this is a tester. This is actually a lot darker than I expected it to be. I think it's quite heavy on the patchouli. Um, so I do really like it. It does seem to lighten up during the dry down and it gets very sweet and musky, um, but yeah it's kind of more of a patchouli scent to me at least in the opening so I love it I have worn it a few times but I'm just I just know that in the coming weeks it's just not going to be the type of fragrance that I reach for here we have a little itty bitty bottle of EBK Parfums Ruby and Vanilla that was gifted to me by a friend I wore it maybe once or twice it's a very it's quite a heavy fragrance this one and I kind of really have to be in the mood for it because it's quite sweet as well. Um, but when I feel like it, it's really great. It's just, it's very interesting. And um, I think it has a red berry note. It's quite a dark vanilla. I think maybe is it a bit boozy? I can't remember. It's just very sweet and, and heavy. And I do like wearing it in the cooler months, but it's not gonna be something I reach for. And it's had some time in the cabinet, so it's time to switch it out. Plus it's only a tiny bottle and I don't want to use it all up just yet. Coco Noir by Chanel. Uh, I've talked about this a few times. This one I really struggle to wear. I love the smell of it, love it. Just struggle to wear it because it gives me a headache. The patchouli in here is quite screechy. Sometimes I just keep it in the cabinet to smell it, not necessarily to wear it. Although I did wear it a couple of times this season and I didn't give myself a headache, but I, you know, I spray it very sparingly knowing that it could give me a headache because it's a squeechy patchouli to me. What can I say? <laughs> so that's definitely having a break. And then here we have Cairo by Penhaligans. Matt really loves this one too. So I don't know if I will move it out entirely or if I'll just put it on his side of the perfume cabinet and see if he wants to wear it for a bit. Uh, but this is really lovely. It actually isn't as heavy as it sort of promises to be when you first have a smell of it or when you first spray it. Um, it sort of dies down very quickly and, but it's just a, you know, it's an, a rosy oud. <laughs> and I'm just not feeling those at the moment. So time for that to go back in the cabinet. 
And I think that might be it for the fragrances that are going out and having a rest in a downstairs cabinet. Curious to know, are you switching out your fragrances whilst we are in the transition period or approaching the transition period? And what sort of things you are getting rid of, not getting rid of, but things that you're putting away to bring back another time. Thanks for joining me and I hope you don't mind this more informal type of video. Um, I will try and do a more formal review video for you in the not too distant future. Thanks everyone, bye.